Hi guys, this is Nadia Hilker. I'm playing Magna on The Walking Dead, and you guys are listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, and I'm sending you all my love. Bye! Hello, my name is Cassie McClincy. I play Lydia on The Walking Dead, and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Yeah! Hey there guys, I'm Callan McAuliffe and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, I'm Lindsley Register and I play Lara on The Walking Dead. You're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Survivors, welcome to episode 122 of the Walking Dead Talk. I'm Kyle. I am unfortunately Brian. And I'm LT. <laughs> uh, we are here to cover the Walking Dead season 10, episode 21, titled Diverged. Uh, we didn't have any feedback for uh, last episode, um, so we will just move right into this week. Uh, Season 10, episode 21, uh, was titled Diverge. It was written by Heather Belson, who is a former producer on The Walking Dead. And it was directed yeah, by let, David let, Bush. Let's, wait, 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 wait. Let's not, let's not go through that too fast, because I have some things to say about this woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Heather Belson used to be a producer on um, season five and six of The Walking Dead, and she is behind um, the ones that, that I remember specifically that she wrote were uh, season five, episode five, which was the one where um, Eugene flipped over a bus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what the heck episode was that? Um, self-help. That, that's, that's when Eugene was uh, looking at... Uh, Rosita and and uh, Abraham having sex in the self help <laughs> section. Um, season five, episode ten, them, which actually of the ones that she wrote wasn't was, wasn't a bad episode. That's the one where they ate dog. Mm -hmm. And um, season six, episode six, always accountable, which was the first episode that we saw Dwight and Sherry, also known as one of my least favorite episodes in the series that is until this episode <laughs> <laughs> but anyway and let's be clear brian they ate a dog yes they ate was it a, a dog or was it multiple dogs because they they did have multiple dogs yes but they didn't eat dog oh oh no. yes yeah. not no, not, not dog. yes not 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 dog is in the dog that, dog that is called dog. Yes. <laughs> but I think they were Dobermans or something like that. But anyway. Yes, they were Dobermans, I believe. Yeah. Yes. So anyway. Um, so that episode that she wrote was good. The rest, crap. And uh, so it's uh, three out of four, crap. <laughs> Gee, Brian, how did you, what did you think of this episode? <laughs> yeah <laughs> everybody that should give you an idea <laughs> well you will notice that um we have the uh explicit tag on this episode so <laughs> that's because i said i want to fucking swear <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my so, God. There, may be, there may be swear words ladies yes. and gentlemen Make this yeah. episode more bearable. <laughs> Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> <laughs> and not just because of the episode. Uh, uh, all right, well, let's move on. It's directed by David Boyd, and he has directed 13 episodes of The Walking Dead. He's also directed season 10, episode 17, Home Sweet Home, and season 10, episode 18, Find Me. Uh, former director of photography on The Walking Dead seasons one and two. First credit for director of photography was in 1990s The Laughing Dead, uh, Firefly, Deadwood, uh, New York PD Blue, and director's credit include uh, Bionic Woman remake, Friday Night Lights, Men of a Certain Age, which was Sp or Scott Bakula and LT. Um, Ooh. 
<laughs> Longmire, the Mist, Queen of the South, Away, among many others. Uh, the description of this episode was, At the lowest point in their friendship, Daryl and Carol come to a fork in the road and head their separate ways. Carol returns to Alexandria while Daryl stays on the road, each going into their own type of survival mode. That description sounds more exciting than this episode. <laughs> Yet very fitting because it's also the lowest point of the show. <laughs> uh, In more ways than one. <laughs> but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to go all Robert Frost and say, you know, a path diverged in a lonely wood. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then let's get into our ratings. Uh, LT, what did you give this episode? Diverged. Well, I was a little generous. I gave it six and a half out of 10 filler. It's not just for soup anymore. <laughs> That's better than mine. <laughs> uh, I gave it a sick dog, Daryl and Carol and rats. Oh my, out of 10. And I am going to give it an all time low of five stone soup indeed, because it tastes like fucking stones to me <laughs> out of 10 <laughs> <laughs> more fitting than anything I, i've had i've had a really rough week so i'm gonna have fun with this episode and just shit all over it <laughs> <laughs> uh, i know that's what was so hard about this too is like you know having now, having yeah. what you just said it's like oh i had a really tough week blah, blah blah you know it's like yes and this show was supposed to be like something to look forward to to be like hey cool it's sunday let's go and it was like huh <laughs> yeah and i i'm going to i'm going to give this show a little bit of credit i do have a feeling that if i watched it one or maybe two more times i might be able to raise my rating of it because I might appreciate the character moments a little bit more, but I only in my, um, just a very busy week. I I've only had a chance to watch it once. And as such, it's going to get a, I've only watched it once. And this is a piece of shit rating. So <laughs> well, if it makes you feel any better, Brian, I watched it three times and it, it never got any better. Never got any better. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it. Actually, I did watch it three times, but the second time was kind of a little bit more like I kind of skipped ahead to today was just like, oh, I'm just going to certain scenes just because I wanted to like, hey, I, what what did she say in this one or like whatever. I was just like, I don't care about half of this anymore. Uh, so. I think I got I got all I needed the first. It, it the just first felt time. it yeah. just felt like a a damn webisode like it was or or a deleted scene it was like a 42 minute deleted scene <laughs> and um not anything we needed to see like and you compare that to um even even the first episode the maggie episode i thought was quite a bit better than this and and certainly the one with um gabriel and and aaron was i thought a fantastic episode this one just I mean, I appreciated that, you know, we got a little more of Carol, but uh, it's just not something I needed to see. Yeah. You know? Well, and we've said this on a couple of other ones. If they could have, this would have done for a half hour episode. Or, mm -hmm. or shorter. <laughs> yeah. They, they, it's like it was long in places it didn't need to be. Yeah. This probably would have been a good, good thing to maybe put on amc plus as you know additional behind the scenes stuff or something like that or just yeah or just like the oh, here is the extra episode for more on daryl and carol's friendship you know just like totally not on like just an an, an add-on <laughs> or here's the new sitcom of uh daryl and carol well i mean if this is what the spinoff is going to be like well then count me out <laughs> they, you know my my Modern Walker family, you know, or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just the whole emo with none of the none of the laugh track. Yeah, and you know, it, if it seems like we're we're filling, um, we are because <laughs> we really got very little feedback on this episode. In fact, um, one of the 
pieces that we got and we delayed our, our recording of this a day and we just got it just before we, we started recording. So, it, you know, it just shows that we really didn't get much feedback on it at all. And to me, that tells you all you need to know. To know. <laughs> um, it, it just, I don't know. I, I'll i get to it when we, we start talking about ratings just, yeah. on this episode. To Because I have... I, shared it in the Facebook group about what I, what I think, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I didn't like it. <laughs> uh, well, Gee, Brian, what are you serious? I never would have understood that from what you said. <laughs> well, I, I'm totally, ta- I'm totally taken aback, Brian. Uh, I, I couldn't tell anything by your intro that you were so <laughs> nonplussed by this episode. <laughs> It, it reminds me, it's like, it's like I'm playing the role of Ruthie in season seven right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it, listeners, if you didn't listen to us back then, uh, she hated season seven with a, with a passion. She hated the whole, uh, you know, Savior's War. And um, yeah, it, it's just anyway. So. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, continue. that's it. <laughs> let's yeah. continue and get we'll get to the dish and section in a minute yeah let's yeah. <laughs> get through let's get through what happy patter we have to offer well we did get one listener's rating and it comes from glenn's from toronto and she gave it a 10 out of or seven out of 10 nice <laughs> just clean simple sweet <laughs> i was gonna say nice. she, she did not give it a, a 10 out of 10 no no, she's just a nice. All right, well, that leads us into our awesome sauce. Awesome sauce! All right, well, Glenn is from Toronto. Uh, she gives her awesome sauce as Dog deciding on choosing and following Carol instead of Daryl. Maybe sensing that Carol needed him more with Carol's current mental state than Daryl did? Eh... Uh. You know, I, I just, I, <laughs> Carol I, needed just a, a sidekick for her scenes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more. I, I liked the, the extra, um, dog scenes. Uh, mm-hmm. no problem with that. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to throw this, this is kind of a non sequitur, but LT, when she called it nice, does it remind you of uh, MRE Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this on a plate. Nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it Steve 1989? I think it's uh, yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. This guy gets so geeked about having MREs. It's, it's so funny. Anyway, no, the abs- I told you the absolute best was the 1918 emergency ration. And he's yep. going, this is over a hundred years old. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually ate part of it. Yep. <laughs> and then it, it's, that's, that's the best part because you'll see it. You'll see his hand come out. He'll grab a piece and it'll disappear and he'll go, Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> or, or I'll uh, say, or I'll say, or I'll say, um, He'll say, like, oh, this is terrible. And then he'll take another bite. <laughs> we'll take another bite to make sure. <laughs> nice. This tastes like sawdust. Oh, God, I have another. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's All probably right, well, worth then- a blade. <laughs> well, then that leads us into our awesome sauce. So why don't you take it, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad when the first thing I have to say about uh, about a show is, has nothing to do with the show itself. Um, so I mentioned last week that my AMC premiere was um, was coming up for renewal, and I was going to cancel it and instead have um, AMC Plus. Well, it was time for it to come in, and for some reason. My AMC premiere, despite being uh, canceled, still worked. And I, I, I don't understand why it's still working. It shouldn't work. It says it. It's, you know, it's no longer in, um, no longer active, but that are no longer, it says it, sorry, it says it expired. But then when you look at the status of it, it says active. So it's like, 
I don't understand why it's still working, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so until it stops working, um, I will, uh, I guess I'll stick with it, but yeah, might as well so yeah, <laughs> their, their loss is my gain. Yay. Um, well, I guess I really tried hard to find something awesome because it just really wasn't. Um, so really seeing the fear trailers <laughs> was about the only thing that really was exciting about rewatching this sh- episode <laughs> over again. Um, Cause I just like, I'm excited for the back half and hopefully it's good. You know, it just seems like a lot's going on and they can do more and have more people on the screen than what we've gotten in this, you know, little 10.3. Um, and we got to see it and there was the teasing John Dory back in action. Yep. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of X-Files lately and it's so funny how like, uh, like seeing like you see like a character like Delon and it's like you're like oh my gosh he's in fear oh he's in law and order it's like all like I feel like like a lot of like some of our favorite like characters from our you know from different like shows for sci-fi or like this you know this kind of show he was a terminator in the sarah connor yes Chronicles. which i loved that I, I just wish it was you know it continued but they cut it off but it's just so funny to see them like starting like their careers back in like all these old sci-fi x-files and all this other stuff yep. and now they're like these huge characters and like you know you know fan favorites and all this stuff and it's i don't know it's it's fun to see that everybody gets their start somewhere if it's law and order <laughs> it might be x files it might be star trek everybody everybody's in law and order. i know i mean my, my husband's always just like oh oh that's that's so and so and like they're from yep. law and order season two episode whatever like he actually knows this stuff uh uh, the only other thing i could really try to give it an awesome sauce i mean i it, it was funny to kind of just see like Carol, like, like sh- she goes off. Um, I think it was like a dog or some like knocked over her crock pot. And so she, she kind of lost her stew. And so she leaves to go find more herbs or whatever, but she's like out in the field or whatever. And then all these walkers start coming up and she's just all like, she's like, what you can't, you think I can't take care of myself. And then she was just like, first you. And like, she just clears them all out or whatever. Um, and then she comes back and she's all covered in blood. And Jerry's all like, uh, you okay? <laughs> she's like, yes, I'm fine. Um, yes, it's a fact. She's coming back covered in blood, carrying her little bucket. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm going to talk about part of that look a little bit later. Later, okay. But yeah, it's the Jerry's going, you okay? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I just, it was just fun to see just her just, I don't know. It, it just, she's such a great actress and I love her character always have. And, you know, it's like just, I don't know. It was something, at least in the episode that was kind of like, Oh, that's cute. You know, <laughs> yep. let's move on. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I had. What'd you have LT? Well, I think my most awesome sauce was the fact it was Jerry. <laughs> I just love his character. It was good to see him again, even though really he was just, for the most part, he was just being Carol straight, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for all the stuff that she was doing, he was like, you know, the, oh, hi, Carol. Oh, hi, Carol. You okay? <laughs> you know, there's like the the nervous eye darts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even though he was the only one in the episode. <laughs> well, there was, there was, you know, guy with a hoe in the background. No- Oh yeah. Guy with a guy with a rake at the wall. Guy carrying two by four in the distance. Yeah, I, I made an observation about that, and I'll leave that at the end. But it was. Well, I mean, come on. It's, it's it's the one chance. It's the one chance that the you know the guys in the grip department. I know get to be, get on, the to be on the show. That's why I was, I was like, the dude that opened up the gate and let her in was probably like just yeah. a PA. <laughs> like, hey, you want to just do this? We. <laughs> He's the intern. It's like, here, put on this dirty jacket, yep. open the gate, and nod at her. <laughs> yep, and he had no speaking role, so no sad card. You, go, you didn't have to pay him. you go, look, Mom, look, I'm in the episode. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, all right. Well, let's just go on to our weak sauce. You're worthless and weak. 
All right. Uh, we didn't have any listeners of uh, Weak Sauce, but we had our own. Uh, what did you have, LT? Well, my Weak Sauce is in two parts. The first is, do I really want Walking Dead content this bad? I mean, it's great that we're getting shows, but it's like, this is just not, mm. it's not compelling television. I mean, it's great that we're having episodes, but I'm just not digging it yeah. that much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the second part was, is the getting stronger than the wanting? Yeah. That's because cool. we want, we want season 11 in a way we want to get back and find out what happens with Negan and Maggie. We want to find out, you know, what happens in Alexandria. We want to find out what happened to Eugene, but what we got was just, you know, it's character pastiches. It's webisode content. It's Mm -hmm. 45 minutes of show that they could have probably done in 20 without the long cuts and the, music pauses and and, yeah (laughs) yeah no i it's it's definitely feeling like you know it's like it's great that like ooh we're having walking dead on but then it's also kind of like is any of this even going to matter you know it's like i mean i think the negan episode obviously is going to probably that's probably what they wanted to do all along but um i mean i just kind of was going into where the fact that i was like you know it's like we already got a daryl and carol episode you know, it's kind of like, you know, yeah. wasn't there somebody else that we could have had some information or, you know, whatever. It was just kind of like, we kind of already had this. And now it's like, the here it is again, but it's just like this long drawn out. Like, we know that they have relationship issues. You know, we saw that already like two episodes ago. And, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know if this was just, they, they set on being like, we want to do six episodes or whatever you know with the knee and one being obviously the last one and it was this just this is all they could get to do the shoot and so they were just like okay well let's scramble let's do something and they are doing a spinoff and like whatever with daryl and carol but it was just like this episode didn't it even just, need to be done yeah like we already knew all this it was just more of yes stuff. it reminds me of sukal on star trek discovery this season Because he had a great quote, wanting isn't the same, is not the same as doing. And this reminds me of this uh, 10C of uh, The Walking Dead, especially this episode of, it's basically not, we, we wanted Walking Dead and, you know, up until this point, and and I, I'm thinking of you, Renee. You're probably listening to us saying, "Finally," <laughs> 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 because we we have been we have been saying that you know we've been giving you the benefit of the doubt, but th- this this one crossed all sorts of lines for me. Um, I I just it, it was a waste of time, time. Yes. for me. It's it was 42 minutes that I couldn't get back. And, uh, I fell asleep twice during the episode and I had to go back and, and watch it again. So, um, that doesn't normally happen, but yeah, (laughs) a show, an episode of this putting me to sleep, uh, is not a good sign. So it just was boring. Yes. And that's basically my, my entire thing for weak sauce is the, entire episode so waste of time <laughs> yep i can completely agree a hundred percent it just we could have done yeah. without it there's no need for it they could have just done five why'd they have to do six it it had some interesting parts to it like i liked you know i i like carol's like struggle trying to get the rats and and her kind of destroying the house in the process. Mm-hmm. I I like Daryl almost getting trapped under the car and um you know getting the um looting the the s- soldier, you know, I, I like that versus what Maggie did a few weeks back. But um 
those were not enough to to save this episode in any way. It just was a waste of time. Waste of time. <laughs> and I can't argue. All right. Well, then why don't we just lead into our what size? Because I know we have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? Uh, no listeners what sauce this week, uh, but we do have our own. So go ahead, LT, take it away. <laughs> well, I th- the first thing I was going to bring up was Carol bringing back her facial expressions from the porch dick era in Alexandria. <laughs> I mean, no, she didn't offer to make Jerry cookies, but it was very reminiscent to me of those scenes where she was being all happy homemaker one minute. And then she was being, you know, I'll get you and your little dog too. But it just seemed almost a little schizophrenic that yes, I I can tell that she's going through some things. We know that she's had some issues back from when she was taking the pills and you know, the book cover with all the kids on it. But she was very, like I said, it just reminded me of that run there with the cookies. And uh, I can't remember his name, just Uh-oh. Mr. Porch Dick. Dick. Yeah. But the fact that she was so happy one minute and then she'd walk off and be like, Rrr. but she was so over the top happy. Mm hmm. And I think that's sort of what was throwing Jerry because I'd say it was kind of, well, it was easy for me to pick up on that she was being extra happy. Um, But yeah, it was just very jarring. So, I mean, the next part was Daryl walking like he had sand in his britches. Uh, He seemed to be walking fine at the first of the episode he seemed to be walking fine you know midway when he was first started pushing the motorcycle but then all of a sudden he's doing the yeah he's doing the fastest walk when he was going down the train tracks and i'm like did he get hurt i mean we know he got he got stabbed in the leg back when he was fighting beta maybe but i'm kind of going if you're going to be limp and you need to sell it earlier than that, it just seemed like it was very pronounced. And I was kind of wondering why. So right after that is when he gets in his little scuffle with the soldier walker and the, the comment my wife made was that walker was suddenly very spry because if you noticed when he was when he stumbled off into the ditch and got hung on the tree, as soon as Daryl came back came down the bank, that walker seemed to suddenly go, you know, hoo ha, and seemed to be moving pretty fast when he jumped on top of him. Uh, and about the two the two bodies that he took the stuff. Yes, I'm glad he took the stuff, <laughs> but. Uh, the comment that I made, it, it reminded me of, you know, why in when I play Fallout, my inventory is always maxed. Loot the body, take all the stuff, and sort it out later. I mean, he's been carrying this mostly empty floppy backpack around with him all this time. So take all the stuff. Check their pockets. Uh Yes, he got he got his multi tool and some magazines and a couple of MREs, but just from personal experience, there's stuff that I'd carry in my pockets instead of carrying it on my web gear in case I had to take my web gear off. So, like I said, loot the body, take the stuff, sort it out later. Wait till you're safe. Just put all that stuff in your backpack and then check it out later. Um. And we had like the many phases of Carol where we had Carol, the home improvement edition, you know, she's like, well, I need power. So she suddenly fixes the solar panels and she's, you know, doing all this stuff and scurrying around because Jerry didn't say, Hey, go help X. So she just sort of starts doing stuff. 
And then, of course, that segues into Carol. I hate drywall edition. Just, you know, when she's trying to chase the rat and she just ends up, you know, trashing that wall, trying to trying to find the rat. I was like, are we that are we snapping that hard that we we just have to go after the wall? And, of course, then again, from a set dressing standpoint, I guess busting up drywall is the easiest, the easiest, cheapest practical effect they could have. And my last hot sauce is I've got to say dog. Dog, dog, dog. You need to get in touch with your inner terrier, boy. <clears throat> Go after the rat. I mean, he's like, he's eating the furniture. He's, you know, eating the blanket. But then when the rat's there, he's just sitting there going, hi, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to see you. And yeah. I'm thinking, uh, I, and granted, granted, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, they, I guess they couldn't have the stunt rat getting eaten. But just most of the dogs like that that I know would have been, they'd have been diving under the counters and chasing around the corners instead of Carol. It would have been the dog going after it. I just was like, there's a rat in the room and the dog's just sitting there going, hi, mom, got a treat. Yeah, I I was taking the dogs kind of being all rambunctious and stuff like that because it's like he's like he's not Carol's dog. Like he's like Daryl's. And so I felt like that dog was just acting out and like not listening to her doing anything because, you know. He, you know, she's not Daryl, and I don't know. I, at least that's how I took it. It was just like, oh yeah, he's like, this is not my master, so I have like a free day to run around and like and do whatever I want, and like you know, you know, bite, you know, tear up the palace and knock stuff over, and not pay, you know, not listen to her commands. Um, but I have, yeah, I agree with you. It's like, what dog is not my dog will freaking go through a you know a fence to get a squirrel, <laughs> you know, like a rat. It's like. Dog, I'm pretty sure that you're hungry is just as much as everybody else, and you you know how to, you know, go <laughs> chase something. And that's my point. <laughs> yeah, it just, eh, just did. That was for you know, it was, it was Carol's scene, so they couldn't let dog you know upstage her. <laughs> my my cat would have done a better job going after the rat. <laughs> would have caught it and ate it right there in front of you. <laughs> And but for that matter, he does a better job at tearing up furniture, (laughs) (laughs) which is not a positive thing. Yeah, I guess maybe Daryl didn't have furniture for dog to tear up. So he was like, whoa, what's this? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, uh, Yeah. The drywall thing, which I think is kind of what goes into my what size. Like, I, I did feel some parts of this episode were just kind of like, oh, we just need something to happen and do. And so, oh, let's make her tear down drywall and break through, you know, because that's like the all the action that we're going to get out of this episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because we can't, you know, I mean, yeah, like they can't, you know, put her up against, you know, another other human being. Because I'm sure but they like- did. But they did kill walkers this episode. No, they did. So we got that from not last week. Um, well, I mean, I like that's kind of like what I thought with like the Daryl and the whole like it was kind of like okay, you know, Carol's got her mission, her quest, which was like I've got to make myself useful or something, and so I'm going to make stone soup. And then Daryl's like, oh, his mission's got to be like, oh, the fuel line broke on his motorcycle, so he has to go find a replacement. So, of course, he's off into the woods and, you know, comes up, like, starts searching all those cars. And then it was just like, okay, the car that is going to give us our action sequence is, like, the walker's inside. He opens up the, you know, the hood, sees, like, oh, this is, like, this looks like I've got my fuel line. But it's like, did he not see it was hanging? Like, Like, the car wasn't on level ground when he went under it. And it was, I don't know, it's like... Couldn't you have just killed the walker? Because don't you just mm-hmm. do that? Is that what, what you're only thing? It's like, oh, here's a walker. I'll just like it's 
easy to kill. It's like it's inside the car. You open the door and just stab it. But it yeah. was just like, oh, no, I'm going to crawl under this car. Oh, look, one of its wheels is actually kind of off the ground, and it's, it's not on level ground. And this walker's going to move around, and, oh, he's, you know, it was just this whole, like, oh, here's the whole, you know, suspense, you know, sequence of, like, Right. Really nothing happening. <laughs> let's do let's do something that's different than what we'd normally do. Put ourselves in some sort of contrived risk, knowing that nothing's gonna happen to him because plot armor, but to create some some tension for the scene because we've got to fill five more minutes of screen time. <laughs> right, exactly. It's just I yeah, I, I like Carol, she get her scene was get to destroy drywall, and Daryl was like, "Oh yeah, and everything that you seem to be very, very like smart and resourceful, and like you know, you you problem solve and this and that, and then you're just doing this, and then it was just like, oh, you know, like oh, here's our suspense moment. Like even the music was kind of like, oh, mm-hmm. and it's like okay, whatever. Of course, he gets out and goes oh. and the and the." You've been doing this for a very long time. Yep. That seems to be like like one of those rookie mistakes that we'd expect to see in World Beyond, perhaps. <laughs> yes. Uh, true, true. Yeah, not, and also... Not uh, Daryl. Right. Well, that's the other thing, too. I was like, I thought... like, and I don't know if... I didn't really notice if like he was kind of like walking weird... Um, before he fell into the pit with that other, the first walker with loot. Um, but I thought even him falling into the pit and like trip, uh, tripping and like, oh, like really? <laughs> like everybody, it always seems like, oh, here, I've got to go kill a walker, but I'm going to trip. And then somehow the walker breaks the branch that's holding it. Oh, now it's like on top of him, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, oh, there's your like, oh, he almost died. Whatever. Just, and when he got out of the ditch, the walkers that fell into the ditch fell into the ditch more gracefully than Daryl did. <laughs> yeah, and they pretty much were consistent. I don't know. I kind of made a comment. It was like, even the walkers looked like they were socially distanced. <laughs> like yep. they were coming in one at a time off screen. So I'm sure they, that person could get out of the way. The next one fell in. It's like, okay, cool. You get out of the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, anyways, that was all I had for my what size. Uh, do you have anything, Brian? <laughs> uh, not, not really. Um, just, you know, I mean, I, I think you guys pretty much said everything that is worth saying. Yeah. Um, well, let's, yeah, let's. But well, I did, sure, I did oh. have, I did have similar thoughts about like the, the car and the, you know, so yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's keep moving then. Uh, well, let's go into our sad and awe sauce. And actually, we don't have anything for this. <laughs> so, well, if we have to, my sad sauce is me. I was sad <laughs> because you had to watch uh, the episode. Because I watched it again. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'll, then I'll give you an awe because it made you sad. <laughs> oh, that's true. That that's all of us. All right. Well, let's just continue on and go into our feedback. We can talk about it. Done talking. Time to listen. All right, we did get some feedback in voicemail actually from Megan Lehman um, from Williamsburg, PA. So let's listen to what Megan had to say. Hi, guys. It's Megan in Pennsylvania with feedback on Diverged, the fifth of six uh, Walking Dead uh, intermezzo episodes this season. And I just want to say I really liked it. I have a feeling most people may not like it so much. Uh, and I, I do understand that. But this was um, kind of a subtle episode, but I think I'm going to watch it again and try to pick up some more on the themes that I noticed. But the title being Diverged, that immediately made me think of um, the Robert Frost poem, 
Um, and Daryl and Carol literally diverged in a wood. So, I mean, they kind of hit you over the head with that one, if you know, if you know the poem. Um, but it, so the, the episode was one of those, you know, slice, slice of life, day in the life kind of stories. But I think it was also about how Daryl and Carol would be better off working together than apart. Um, I, you know, for example, when Daryl needed the, the knife that he had given Carol, uh, or maybe he could have used some help getting, you know, that part from the car without the car almost falling on him. Um, you know, it was, he survived fine, but it would have been much easier to get by with a, a trusted friend. Same with Carol. Yeah, she was fine, but she had a really frustrating day. She didn't get to make her soup. You know, the rat and the dog situation drove her crazy. I, I think that the way the whole episode just felt like something was off, everything was frustrating to both of them. They just had a bad day. Um, I think the message we're supposed to get there is like, you know, they work better as a team. They're better as a duo. So hopefully, as a few people said, wow, I hope the Daryl and Carol spinoff isn't like this all the time. Well, they're not together. So, yeah, it's not going to be um, like that when they're actually wor hopefully working together and putting on a united front to accomplish their goals. Now, one thing I did notice, there were some similar beats, and unfortunately, I didn't write them all down um, to their stories. But one of them was, I think both of them said the line, see you later, asshole. It was it was Carol to the rat and Daryl to the uh, zombie in the car that uh, whose weight had shifted and almost got him killed. Now, I will say, I think there was some real sloppiness in, in this episode that bothered me mostly with Carol's story. There were some just totally unrealistic details with, you know, the rat situation. First, if you have one rat that size in your house, you have a lot of rats of various sizes in the house. Uh, they said Alexandria had been, you know, infested with rats. So it's not like Carol's house just had one and done. Uh, that was kind of silly that she was chasing this one rat, trying to pick it up with her bare hands. I don't know, the cardboard trap thing, the rat would have just chewed through the cardboard if she she hadn't gotten there immediately. Um, that was kind of silly. Uh, I thought they could have just done a better job in, you know, filming that rat chase. But I did like the dog acting. I think because they have so few actors to pay on these episodes, they could put all their budget into dog, which was wonderful. Possibly dog was the best actor of the show. And a final thing I have to mention that drove me nuts. I think we need to send Carol back for some food safety training because she walked into Alexandria after however long on the road, absolutely filthy, and then she's wearing those same fingerless gloves and starts picking up food and chopping it, wearing these filthy gloves, never washed anything, never took her gloves off, and then she's like out killing zombies and picking up the bucket, you know, with the, the food that she had with her bloody hands, and then she's chasing rats, tearing through walls. All of this doesn't seem to bother her from a food safety perspective, but when dog knocks the bucket over and the food falls on the floor, she couldn't just pick it up and wash it off. The floor was much cleaner than she was. That drove me nuts. There was some OCD thing going on there that I could not get over um, with Carol. She should know better since she plays Susie Homemaker. But other than that, um, I really actually enjoyed it. And I hope you guys will um, have some positive things to say. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. I actually, you made some good points, but I just kind of had a hard time with just the pacing of this episode. So that's probably what ruined it for me. But I think actually it was funny when she was talking about the Carol. Like I, I didn't really necessarily catch that. It was just like, oh yeah, she she was filthy. <laughs> She's like preparing. Yeah. Food. Yeah, and yeah. I don't, the th first thing that popped, like, like, sh like, you can still eat rats, can't you? I know. On I've seen Survivor, yes. and they, mm -hmm. they're yeah, they're tasty. It's, it's like I I wasn't sure. I, you know, I obviously didn't get to watch it. You know, a whole bunch of times, but um, you know, I, unless they're they're carrying typhus or something like that. Yeah, I think well, of that <laughs> old uh, Little House on the Prairie episode. <laughs> <laughs> No, and I was thinking about the whole food safety and this and that. And then for some reason, Bob popped in my head. It's like tainted meat. <laughs> yep. But they weren't they weren't zombified rats. They were just rats. Um, zombified rats. Well, and you get well, and if I if I can, you get your one tasty historical fact that back in the days of sailing ships especially in the British Navy, they would send the midshipmen, if they were boys, down into the hold to chase rats that were in the stores. 
because it was fresh meat. Yeah. And they call, and they called them Miller's because they looked like somebody working in a grist mill because they'd come out and be all powdered with flour. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, what'd you guys uh, think of her feedback? It's, it was good. And I said it earlier, I think I'll probably appreciate this episode more on subsequent watches. And, um, I, I think that my, um, uh, my impression of the show is a little bit tainted speaking of tainted meat <laughs> um, because I've had a really busy week and I really uh, had looked for, you know, something good to come out of this. And I just didn't, it just felt like a waste yeah. of time, but, but there are, it, it reminds me a little bit. Uh, and I mentioned that I think earlier in the season um here's not here when i first saw here's not here i hated it because here we are you know glenn has has disappeared under a dumpster rick <laughs> ha is in a, a motorhome or an rv and you know it looks like the the walkers are about to get him and so you know two of our people are in peril and they go to this uh, Morgan episode that's a flashback. And I'm like, what the F is, are we? I don't know why I held back. <laughs> yeah, <the explicit. laughs> yes, this is explicit for a reason. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what what the hell, you know, what, why the hell are we seeing this right now? So I didn't like the episode at first. I hated it in some ways. I, I mean, I appreciated it, but I... Also was really pissed off that we were getting that episode. And then when I went back later in the season and rewatched, I loved it. So perhaps on subsequent watchings, I'll go back and I'll have more of a positive uh, opinion of it. Now, you guys have seen it more than I have, and you obviously don't feel much differently about the episode than than you did so maybe i'm wrong maybe we'll maybe we'll love it yeah right now. I, I think i think one of my problems though was the fact that it was like that i just this was a story that i just didn't really want i wanted somebody else. right you, you know it's like like the princess story yeah it was like the first time i saw it i was kind of like oh this is kind of like whatever and then when i watched it and actually you know and i watched it a couple times i was like oh like i'm, I'm getting it you know i'm like i'm you know then i was like the story started like making sense and then I was like learning about her more and it was like that, that kind of stuff like helped me that put interest into her because I, she's new. I want to know more about her. And I felt like that episode, they really did a good job of that. But this was just like, I almost actually remembered whenever uh, the previews were coming on from the last episode about this episode. And I kind of was like, I thought that we were getting something else. You know, I, I, I don't necessarily look ahead too much, like, you know, of like what's coming down the line. Um, like the Negan, I knew that was going to happen, but, if, you know, until we started talking about it a couple episode episodes ago, I was kind of like, oh, that's right. There's a Negan episode. Like, I don't want to like jump too far ahead. I just kind of want to yeah. like, let, let it just go. But it was like, I saw the previews and I'm like, oh, Carol, Daryl, didn't we just have that episode? I thought we were going to get like something new, you know, like or different. Yeah. And I think that that was part of why I was kind of like, I just didn't want to see more of this. I, I, yeah. I, it, it, again, we, we talked about this in, in this, uh, season already, or this, you know, cross section of a, a subsection of a season, but, you know, very COVID-y and this may have been the most covid -y of the episodes that we've seen so far because yeah. it, it really felt like, you know, we were, we were watching, um, they were, you know, it was a lot of Carol just by herself and a lot of Daryl just by himself and, and that was it. So, I mean, yes, easier to shoot in a COVID time, but it, you know, it just felt like each of those stories could have been their own webisodes and not an episode of the show. So, yeah. 
Yeah. And I think maybe in that in that way, if it had been presented in that way, maybe I would have liked it more. But getting it in that way, and I'll just remember what the way that Renee said it last week, super, super, super boring. <laughs> Uh, well yeah i think yeah it just and yes renee i did hear you on uh the walking dead cast this week so (laughs) (laughs) so uh, you said you said something similar on there but um yeah it's just uh, yeah oh well well i already said it enough (laughs) yeah and i think the i think the thing too when you were talking about the covidness of it when jerry was saying oh yeah well they're working on this and we're working on that and we're working on this and it just seemed like the only person you saw was you know shovel guy in the distance Mm -hmm. yeah right guy in the distance and jerry yeah it's like so where is where where are all these hungry alexandrians they're all um doing social distancing (laughs) well they're all yeah. off screen well since we're talking about this i'll just go ahead because this is what i had in my feedback it was just like yeah out, out of all the episodes just because i wasn't really like it wasn't something that i was like looking toward like for like i wasn't looking for like oh is this the covid episode you know, like how are they doing they did this during the pandemic you know that's still ongoing um but it's like you i felt like i just i immediately saw that from the start of this episode and it just, it kept like popping up. I'm like, Oh yeah. It's just like Jerry's at a distance, you know, Carol's at a Jerry. Oh, she she walks in, she's by herself. You know, it just like became really apparent. And then that just kind of was like, Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. It just, that got my head. But then it was like, I went back again and rewatched it. And I noticed, I'm like, oh, yeah, she walks into Alexandria. And, of course, we were making fun of it. It's like, oh, and the PA is the one that opens the gate to let her in because that's, like, the only crew that's, like, a you know, that can be there. Um, but then you could hear the sound effects. And you hear all this commotion going on, all these hammers and, like, building and, like, people talking. But yet you only see her and there's no one around her. But mm. then, like, later on, yeah, she's talking to Jerry. Then it's like, oh, yeah, there's, like, a cup, Like, one person is way in the distance. And like immediately goes off screen. And then later on, there's like a close up of her. And then you see someone walk, you know, like there's the extra that's just walking past her just to make it look like there's like life behind her. But I swear, like there was this episode and I put it or a scene and I put it in our notes that I was like, there was somebody in the back with like the pickaxe or what, or, you know, working and i swear that that person's wearing a mask. <laughs> like I watched yeah. that so many times. And I'm like, yeah, that's not like oh he's got a beard. It's like he, yeah he's wearing a mask. Yeah he's wearing a mask. So it was kind of I don't you know it's just like whatever. It, it just they obviously did their best to try to give some life depending on what their like you know restrictions were and, what, and the safety protocols and stuff like that. But yeah, even the walkers looked like they were socially distanced. <laughs> like when they were like, <laughs> it still ends up feeling like this is Carol's I am legend. <laughs> yeah, that she's she's like by herself. Yeah, yeah. It just if it, it just didn't really have the impact if that's what they were trying to at least try to go with like the whole story. But it just yeah. yeah. I'll believe it at that. <laughs> All right, Megan. Thank you so much for your feedback. Um, we always love the voicemail, so definitely keep that coming. I think next week's going to probably be a, more more exciting and probably more stuff to talk about um yep all right well our next feedback comes from glenn is from toronto um and lt you want to take this i will so daryl lost both dog and the pocket knife all originally from leah without the pocket knife daryl was forced to improvise and come up with an alternate plan to replace that broken hose on his motorbike so a comparison that even without the missing one can soldier on and solve problems and get ahead in spite of the missing the items and the loved ones. If he still had the pocket knife, he wouldn't have gotten the two replacement knives, the ammo, the machine gun, and the MREs. I wonder if there's more army stuff out there to be raided. Maybe an army barracks is close by too. Yeah, I thought the same thing because it was like, even though 
we, you know, this is just what we've got so far. And there are the, I mean, well, I guess we did get, uh, when, uh, the, uh, Maggie, the the first episode where there's the the rape rapiers, rapiers, whatever you know, it's like, and they're all in military garb. So it's like, you know, we don't know who this group is, or like, yeah, maybe it is a military base. But yeah, here's again, we're seeing more military, you know, outfits. So Daryl's pocket knife helped Carol fix the solar panels' power. So even though Daryl and Carol are going through this tense patch and are physically apart. They are still working together indirectly, and having tiffs in an apocalypse is not the best time to be apart. Together, they would have been that much stronger. She says, Daryl pushing the bike through the woods has the same vibe as season six episode Always Accountable with Dwight and Sherry in the end taking his motorbike. Yeah, Which is is worse than losing dog and a pocket knife. And who wrote that episode? (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen. I rest my case. (laughs) (laughs) So Carol went a tad overboard in flushing out the rat. She really wanted to accomplish at least one thing and failed at that dismally. I don't think Carol is used to failure. Reminded me of a rat or mouse movie where the guy goes insane and destroys his house trying to capture the critter. At least Carol only had drywall to replace. So Jerry noticed that with Carol that she needed the extra support and dearly wanted to feel useful. Yeah, sometimes all you need is a hug. No words needed. That was actually a positive. Okay, so there's there's an awesome sauce um, or an aw sauce, the hug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay, she goes on and says, that stone soup story was quaint and illustrates the workload is always lessened and goals achieved if you share the work out. Trying to do it solo can also result in failure and a flagging spirit. Why didn't Carol just go with the three-second rule and pick up the soup ingredients that had fallen on the floor? Good question. (laughs) Hmm. Just recall that another Walking Dead episode, season six, episode 14, twice as far, that entailed a series of times Olivia taking stock of the plentiful pantry and then pulling down the garage door to the kitchen. And that episode ended with Carol leaving Alexandria and getting stopped on the road by some of the Savior gang and the unfortunate death of Denise by Dwight that Daryl and Rosita had to witness. It's a good point. So come all the way to this episode, season 10, episode 21, Diverged, and it has the better outcome of both Daryl and Carol staying in Alexandria. Although the two are still apart, there's a chance of reconciling. And of course, plot armor with the spinoff approaching too. So Daryl let Carol keep the pocket knife. So maybe symbolic that he may be on the road to coping with the loss of Leah. He has other pocket knives now, lol, until she, Leah, decides to pop back up into his life and make that situation all the more interesting with maybe Connie also reappearing at the same time. If Virgil hasn't imprisoned her like he did to Michonne. (laughs) Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Glennis. Thank you, um, Glennis. Yeah, the, you always make some always great feedback and great points. Um, I mean, I... And she's like me in, in the fact that she has a photographic memory for uh, scenes and, and episodes. <laughs> so... No, and that helps because it's like that. I don't know. It's just, you always add to the discussion. Um, but I mean, yeah, like the, with the whole Jerry and Carol hugging and it was like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the the epitome of the awesome for this episode and i totally d- didn't even like make it into my notes um yeah i this i i actually probably i'd have to agree though just for another like not necessarily maybe all sauce but just to make a point but it's like yes it was good to see that daryl and carol like they did come back so even though they're apart, you know, they're 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 in they're in Alexandria. They're in the same place. It's not Daryl out camping and you know Carol's always popping up to come visit here and there. So it's like I, I you know we'll see where this leads uh to like what whatever they do in season 11 and towards obviously the spin-off cuz they're going to have that. But I mean, it, it you know Carol could have like I think she even like mentioned it where she was just like talking to a dog was like, "Oh, you know, I'm like you know, should I just take off? Should I just leave? You know, it's like, you know, Daryl, like, I forgot what it was, like, Daryl um, comes back. Uh, no, it's like, Daryl always comes back. He says, I don't, do I? 
um, and then I think that's what she was talking about, you know, like leaving or whatever. So, I, you know, they could have had it where she takes off and that would have been part, you know, like whatever. I've been like, oh no, she's totally like leaving everybody or leaving the whole thing. And then Daryl coming back. But yeah, they, they kept them together at least. Yep. Or she's totally leaving again. Well, yeah. <laughs> she does. She does do that a lot. Um, all right. Well, uh, that was the rest of our uh, listeners feedback. So, uh, I mean, I kind of like, Brian, did you have anything else? Cause I pretty much was my only other feedback, unless I think of something else was just the whole COVID episode. <laughs> I think I've said enough. <laughs> yep. All right. I think, I think we, I think we beat the wheels off this thing. About <laughs> like we, like we spent as enough time and we're not going to add more to fill uh, to make this <laughs> to our <Correct>. podcast. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, then that leads us into news, ratings, and info. There's a couple weird stories on the news. Well, we talked about this a little bit. Um, I said that the episode was a low point in in this uh, in this show, and I said in more ways than one. And unfortunately, one of the ways is in the ratings. <laughs> For for the first time in The Walking Dead history, The Walking Dead did not get in its first watch two million viewers in, in its um, first airing. It got a zero point five five in the eighteen to forty nine, with one point nine three eight million viewers. So, um. The ratings between this and fear are not much different anymore. Uh, that is down at only down just a tiny little fraction um, in the 18 to 49 last week. It got a 0 0.56, but in the total number of viewers, it got a 2.113 uh, million last week. Talking Dead, though, was also down. Uh, it got a 0 0.13 in the 1849 with 620,000 viewers down from last week's 0 0.18 and 808,000 viewers. Uh, in the parrots this week, parrot analytics, it uh, still was at a number seven in overall demand uh, down from number six. Uh, it got a, was at 43.9 times the average show's demand versus last week's 45.1 times. Uh, number one this week was yet again, SpongeBob. Good old, always SpongeBob. And uh, there was some speculation that some of that might have to do with the fact that um, there is a prequel that is airing right now on um Paramount Plus, that's, I think it's Camp Coral, and that, yeah, I haven't seen it, but, and uh, this yeah, information on Talking Dead is absolutely wrong. So, <laughs> um, actually, who was on there was um, Melissa McBride, Cooper Andrews, uh, the director, David Boyd, and... I don't remember who else was on. It there. was the, it was the, yeah, I didn't watch it. It was one of the two twins that does the home oh, flip show. On that's right. Yes. HGTV. One of the property brothers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Who's been on talking dead before. And I don't remember who it was either. So that guy with the beard, <laughs> that, that guy with the beard yep, okay. that, yes. does, that does the house show. Yep. And um, as far as news is concerned, I believe there was some news. All I was going to say was we had another fear trailer. Yes. And yeah. we've got one more week of this before fear comes back. Yep. Excited for that. Although I think next episode is going to be really good. So... If it, if all of this was for not, then at least I think a backstory of Negan's 
Negan. I'm really holding out hope for the backstory of Negan. I am too, especially when we know that it's actually his wife. <laughs> like that's in the episode. There is one story here from Collider saying um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan was surprised that um, this the show was ending on season eleven, and there's some speculation was the show canceled, and I I I don't know that that I think that's more speculation yeah. than anything, mm-hmm. and you know, but you know maybe it was going to keep going, and that maybe they decided not to have it keep going because um the rings were you know well, not not up to speed or whatever yeah that totally could be part but also i'm curious if it's like the pandemic had anything to do with it because that threw up the yeah. whole timetable and they had three movies that they're saying they're going to make right right and i think that could be part of it that maybe they're trying to transition yeah assets and resources away from the show that'll be involved in the movie that could be it could be, and um, I don't know. I, I think that given the erosion of the ratings from uh, season to season, especially this season, I think that um, that ending the show, especially considering at least up until Ten C, um, that the show has been you know on a high note. I think uh, ending the show now is probably in its best interest and um, for them to continue the walking dead into like season 15, um, you know, probably, probably wouldn't be in its best interest, you know? Well, they, they had a interview where uh, Robert Kirkman had talked about the end of the comic book. And that was yeah. something else I was going to bring up is that the comic book ended. So that kind of set a path for the show to end as well. Cause you know, it's ending roughly at about the same um, spot as the comic book ends. Yeah. Right. So, you know, the, this we're about to see the Commonwealth and um, it's shortly after the Commonwealth comes in that the show ends. So yeah, that I I thought kind of the same is just uh, you know, I think there's there there is time. Ratings, I feel like ratings though and you follow you like look at ratings more than I do, but after even just being part of Nielsen before, it's just like so much has changed on how people watch and then what's your actual yeah. like what's your actual like what's the actual measurement that is like how mm. something is popular and what's not. And it's just seems like what airs live nowadays doesn't, you know, especially like how you factor in all the people that do pay for AMC plus or whatever, and then see it the week before. And then they're not even on a, the live schedule. Um, so it's not to say that it's like, you know, maybe the parents do kind of make a little bit more sense, but um I think there's still a lot of, you know, interest in The Walking Dead and The Walking Dead universe, but I do agree that, like, with the comic of already ended, everybody that reads the comic already knows that, like, oh, this is how it ends and this is what happened for the show to be like, okay, well, we could either keep going and just keep telling the rest of, you know, they could make the Commonwealth three, four seasons if they wanted to, if there's enough in the comics. But this also is like on Game of Thrones where it's like, oh, we don't have a book to follow anymore. So we can kind of like take this wherever we want. And Mm -hmm. they could, yeah, wrap this all up in season 11, knowing that we have movies coming forward and the spinoffs. And, you know, if there's, you know, there's, there's more to be done, I guess, but you know, getting just walking dead proper like yeah it, i it just maybe this right and there's and you also have to consider that they're trying to protect their ip at this point and they don't want to just flat run it into the ground yeah right so at least let the show go out on a higher note right, right rather not. than rather than take the chance that with what we've seen as the seasons have progressed and the rates have gotten lower that they finally just, you know, flat run it into the ground. Right. Right. It's time to take it into a new direction, new stories, new, you know, our, our characters, let's introduce, introduce us to new ones, which, you know, we have fear and like those, 
you know, there's definitely been a lot of ups and downs with fear, but it also was a completely, or at least what I appreciated about it too. It was like, it was a completely like not tied to any of our characters from the walking dead. It right. used to now that the crossover, but I mean, it was like, Oh, we get this whole family in LA. We have no, you know, like whatever. And then we had all the way up to season three, you know, that was like, you know, it's like, okay, with Madison and then, um, and Alicia and all that. And then of course, Things got mixed up because of showrunners, but now this whole new like approach with it's like almost kind of like a Western style, like little, mm-hmm. you know, like bottle episodes or, you know, pairing off characters or like the, the, the story that they're telling has been very, very enjoyable. And it's like, it, you know, that's kind of that they're working on it. I mean, I, I feel like the Daryl and Carol spinoff is just not going to be interesting, at least maybe to me, because I just I don't. I, I I don't know. I'm gonna hold my breath. I mean, oh, right. I'll, I'll I'll just have to see. I just it's hard. Like the journey that Carol and Daryl have had since episode one, season one. You know, like when we first get introduced to them, to all this time to where they're at now. Like I feel that there's like they've had this journey together that has like there's there should be a definite end. Like there, 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 there's an ending, and then somebody else takes over and moves on. Like, like Carol used to be the, you know, like the battered, you know, wife of, you know, uh, what's his face that got eaten. You know, Daryl's like the redneck, you know, with the brother who's, you know, like just trouble and this and that. You know, we grew up with them and saw all the, you know, amazing things that Carol, you know, her character like turned mm-hmm. into from all the like everything that she had to face and survive with that it's just like this story to me is kind of like that's this is what i'm afraid it's like they're pushing this too far for me but we'll see maybe they i'll get surprised but i just i thought when i heard the spinoff i was like uh that's kind of that's too much it's someone else needs to like a new another character needs to take over but I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> you're we'll you're gonna make me say you're gonna make me say it. We need a new character, new character to take over, like Hope and Iris. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, they only have one more season and then they're gone. I had to go there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's just we'll see we'll see. But I mean We'll see. Yep. I'll still watch it. All right. If you want to interact with us, we encourage you to follow the uh, fo- follow us on Twitter at Walking Dead TTM. To so submit your theories and feedback, most people post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group, and you can find that at facebook.com slash groups slash Walking Dead TTM. Uh, email us at Walking Dead at talkthroughmedia.com. And we also have a feedback form at talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback. We love voicemails, so... That's definitely what we would love more of. So if you want to give us some voicemails, you can call 216-232-6146. All of our new episodes are on YouTube, so search for Talk Through Media and remember to subscribe and click the bell to get notified of when we have new videos. Uh, the videos do go up first before the podcast does, so that is definitely a great way to basically get the episode as soon as I'm done with it. We would love it if you would like and review the Talk Through Media Facebook page at facebook.com slash talk through media the best way that you can support us is through our patreon that's at www.patreon.com slash walking dead talk through we'd like to thank our patreon supporters clint mccollum renee murray and lawrence todd you can subscribe <laughs> You can subscribe to us in Apple Podcasts or the podcast client of your choice. While you're there, please give us a rating and a review. You can also leave us a review at podchaser.com. You can rate individual episodes or the whole podcast. Remember to share our posts on Facebook and Twitter when we post them and tell a friend. Word of mouth is still one of the best ways to get us new listeners. And we like new listeners. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, what else do we have going on with the network, Brian? You guys still doing um, Star Trek? Well, these days we have uh, Patreon coming out for um, the Star Trek podcasts. We were hoping to do one um, 
before the end of the month, but I, my schedule hasn't allowed it. But we'll be doing one um, probably week after next. Um, and uh, that you can find out about by going to patreon.com forward slash Brian or Ruthie. That is for the Star Trek Discovery podcast, the Star Trek Picard cast. And Kyle and I do the Lower Decks, uh, Lower Decks Star Trek Lower Decks podcast. And um, also we're saying we don't uh, say it too much, but uh, one of the things going on in the network is the Rebinge uh, Deep Space Nine podcast that uh, uh, James and Kim do. So that has been going strong and they, they've been releasing episodes every week. So you can, you can catch that on the network. So, uh, yeah, yeah, check them out. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well then, uh, for next episode is, uh, season 10, episode 22. Here's Negan. Um, which I think hopefully will be a very good, like glimpse into Negan's, you know, start written by david leslie johnson mcgoldrick uh directed by laura belsey and the description and i believe i got this off of google youtube uh with maggie back at alexandria carol takes negan on a journey to minimize the increased tension here negan reflects on his late wife lucille and the events that led him to this point and this one sounds like the most interesting of the six yes. so it's just it's not supposedly reflecting the the same story as the comic book miniseries. There's like a f four yeah. uh, issue miniseries of Here's Negan, but um, this is definitely, I think, a, a story that of all the ones that uh, has been presented in Tensi, this is the one I want to see. So, yep. looking forward to it. Yep. All right. So until next time, I'm Kyle. I'm Brian. And I'm Mel too. And this is the Walking Dead Talk. Good night, everyone. Have a good fucking night. <laughs> <laughs>